Aloha cupcakes. My last video was using this green wrap brush to do all the things that everyone said it couldn't do because it's a touch up brush and not for pinstriping and blah, 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 blah. It worked just fine. Now the comments that I got though were that the blue wrap was infinitely better than the green. So today we're gonna give that a shot. And upon initial just inspection of them, when you look closely at the bodies right in here, the green wrap is a bit thicker towards the hilt than the blue wrap. And there's noticeably less hairs in it. And as soon as I go to palette it, I can see that the difference in the hairs itself, whether it's because of the coarseness or because of the just lack of, this one's a lot more flexible. Which, let's see when it's loaded up, if it flops over on itself. Eh, not so much. Okay. That's the thing that I tend to worry about when it comes to brushes that have that much flexibility. Because if you are, say, upright, and you're facing the vehicle that you have to paint on, and the brush tip starts falling over on you, it's kind of frustrating. So let's give this a shot, shall we? Now, right off the bat, I noticed that I got to go a little bit slower just to maintain some consistency in the line. And I'm aware I did not add any reducer. This is the paint straight out of the bottle, so I'm not messing with any of that stuff. I just want to see how this one goes. And so far, it worked okay. It maintained consistency through it. The change in rate of speed for me left me with a little bit of quiver in the line, especially when I first started out. It kind of evens out as I got more comfortable with this one. But I am noticing that this sharp tip makes it so that when I pull a line out for a short line, it kind of fades. So what I mean by that is it tapers off into a thinner line. A lot of my line design, especially when it comes to like the actual designs that I do, I tend to go with a heavier line that fades into a thinner line. So that's not really a problem or a deal breaker for me. It's kind of useful, actually. Now with the second line, I notice that it fades out a bit quicker because it's just, well, it just did. I'm also painting on a white board that I have no idea what this base coat is, and it's definitely not clear coated. Some form of primer on a wooden canvas board or some garbage. I just grabbed this thing in the shop because I was working on something. Now pulling turns with this one's a little bit less tricky than it was with the other brush, which is definitely a benefit. But I mean, we're, we're talking about some pretty minute differences there. And I am noticing that I'm riding really heavily on this tip and not using the much of the body, which has got me palleting a lot more frequently to try to maintain that consistency of the tip. And then when I do pull it into a, more of the body, we get a much fatter line. And it's not, for me, that's not undesirable. I could see how that would annoy someone else. So working with these sharp little pointy lines is a little more tedious for me. I think with the other brush, these sharper, shorter lines were a little bit easier to do. There was a, less, a lot less concern for it. So I'm gonna give one of the tighter turns a uh, try here. Now looking at the line that I did with the green wrap, you can see that it's got a bit of a quiver to it and that isn't so much that my hand was shaking, it's that the paint itself was flowing a little funky while I was trying to maintain some degree of consistency. Now this brush flows a lot more fluidly in the tighter curves. And I think that thinner tip allows me a little bit more play room so that if I do have to quiver a little bit, it doesn't necessarily show in the paint as much. Now I'm gonna top, I'm just gonna copy this other line that's over here. And one of the things that I did when I did this one, because I was trying to stay right on the tip when I did the last line, is I'm doing that exact same thing here. And hopefully you can see that that line that I just did trying to mimic the exact same movement that I did pulled a lot thinner than the other one. So now let's give it a shot, see if I can do one that's a little bit tighter. And it seems that I can pull a lot thinner and tighter curves with this one. I don't know if that's necessarily a benefit because the thinner they are, the harder they are to see, at least once you get to a certain point. Let me give it a shot with, just run one out with the body on this one. 
Eh, it's clean enough. I don't mind this. I, I, I don't know that I would ever recommend this brush to anybody, but I'm definitely having fun with it. Of course, I guess that's the thing that you would recommend a brush for in the first place. But it's definitely a lot more difficult than some of the other brushes that I have. Yeah, that one's kind of fun. And yes, I, I rate each individual line on how fun they are to paint. That's um, that's a logical thing for... I have no idea why I do that. I just do. But all in all, I think that this brush works just fine. I don't see it as being anything necessarily magical or, or special in comparison to the 20. There's a little bit of difference here and there. But I think that if you really put the time and patience and effort into using them, either one of them is going to get the job done for you. I don't see it as that different from one to the other. I mean, I guess if you have, I don't know, maybe you like blue better than green. I don't know. Maybe they're easier to clean. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't see this one as being that much greater. I mean, I'm going to keep them around. I'm going to test these guys out a few more times, probably do some other weird stuff with them. But I, I think that ultimately the blue and green wraps are, while they are slightly different, I don't think it's different enough that I would be a fan of either one. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think about these things. Till then, stay moist, my friends.